Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PA Dream. Today, we are on a special mission. Uh, Ness and I are actually going to go downtown and leap in search of uh, kiln-dried cocoa lumber. Uh, now, if you're curious as far as what kiln-dried is, it actually means you put a piece of wood, a piece of lumber, inside kind of like a stove. And what it does is it dries the wood out of it so it is stable. Uh, it reduces the amount of warping, uh, cracking, um, shrinking. It, it enables you to be able to have stable wood for your furniture type of build. We have a furniture type build that's going to be a project that we're going to be working on down inside the basement. You might find curi curious yourself. Uh, but that's what the mission is for today. We've never been to this place that we're going to today. It was recommended by one of our friends at our meal. And uh, we're going to see if they have it. If not, if we can't find a place and they don't have what we're looking for, we're going to be in search at other places. We'll just ask some questions when we go downtown. Oh, well, anyway, let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. underway. So anyway, that's Lazada. That's the guys from Lazada. They were just delivering a package to us right now. And uh, uh, we told them we were in search of some cocoa lumber. So they gave us an alternate cocoa lumber place to look for. So we have multiple places that we can look for cocoa lumber. Uh, so anyway, uh, thanks to the Lazada guys over here. Uh, they are here every day, yeah, almost every day. For her, day. she's always ordering from Lazada. <laughs> All right, let's head back out. Okay, we, we, we just can't seem to get out of the subdivision. I know. Did you make, did you make the, for the... I buy like that and I will make it. Okay, still working on it, still working on it. Okay, thanks. Anyway, we're, we're, we're trying to get out of here, uh, but uh, that that's Otto. You remember, he, he's our ironworks guy. And he's making a hanger for one of our <laughs> wall decorations so he's trying to get the end pieces the special end pieces that we're looking for <laughs> hey juliet <laughs> we're headed shopping looking for some cocoa lumber cocoa cocoa lumber cocoa lumber oh that's right from the cocoa tree but, okay, okay. we need kiln dried kiln dried uh, Juliet, they cut down some cocoa, coconut trees and they had cocoa lumber because that's what people do here when they're building, especially for scaffolding things like that. If they have extra cocoa uh, lumber from the coconut trees here that they fall when they build a the house, they use that for the scaffolding and the building materials for the house building. Okay, well we're headed out. We're headed out. We'll see you guys later. So we found a place that was very close to our street. Uh, it's maybe mm, one kilometer down the road from where we turned down our subdivision. They don't have the highest quality cocoa lumber, but this is only for some framing. It's a sub uh, a subsection. It's going to be covered uh, with with uh, plywood on the outside. It's not really going to be seen. The only thing I'm concerned with is I just want to make sure that the wood is straight. And uh, so I asked them to give us their straightest wood that they have. So let's go ahead and go back. I have to turn the truck around. This is with them while they're picking out the wood. I want to be there when they're picking out the wood. And then what we'll do is we'll have them rip it and then we'll load it up in the back and we'll bring that back to Villa Fleas. We also need to get some something like 16 penny nails, we call it in the US. I don't know what they call it over here in the Philippines, uh, but it's what we're going to need to be able to do uh, the construction of the wood to make the framing. Uh, well, let me wait for this traffic to get out of the way, then we'll head right across the street back behind us back here and load up on some cocoa lumber. right 
Anyway, we have a little bit of a problem. Uh, some of the places, especially the rural places, uh, when they cut, they don't have a guide on their table saw. Uh, they don't have a guide. So every one of the pieces of lumber that they cut, they're, they're, different, they're different sizes. So what we're going, we, we kind of we stopped, we stopped the cutting up. I need about 15 of these pieces. Yeah, yeah, you can just set it right inside there. That'll be fine. So what we did, we we uh, we stopped, and we're going to try to find a place that has a guide on a table saw. If you look, if you look at the table saw here. They don't have a guide, so uh, I need the lumber to be really close and precise so we don't have a bunch of warping when we start putting the plywood on there. So we're going to head, we'll pay for this, and then we'll go and search for some more lumber. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to drop this. It was so close to the house, it's easy just to drop these off here. We're going to leave these here at Villa Fleas, and we're going to go look for some place that has uh, maybe a little bit straighter. Now this this is something a tip I got to tell you right now. There's a big difference between shopping for lumber in say North America than it is in the Philippines, especially in rural communities. Uh, there's no such thing as tolerance when it comes to this stuff. And everything here, if you saw, there was no guide on the on the rip saw. And uh, when they cut, when they're ripping it, even when they're ripping it, they rip all this by eye. Their eyes are good. <laughs> they're very close, but we're talking about quarter inch of a difference, maybe almost, almost a little bit less than one centimeter, maybe, uh, between one piece and the other. And if you're putting boards on the outside and you start attaching nails or screws, you don't want any warping on because of the different uh, widths of your uh, framing. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Maybe we won't find it. I don't know. This is a experience that we're finding out today and we're sharing that experience with you as well. Alright, well anyway, I just struck gold. Uh, I normally build framing. When I do framing, I frame with pine in the US. I use white soft pine. It's very easy to use. If it's something that you don't need to look at, uh, that's what we build with in the US. And guess what? I just found a place. Actually, it was referred to me by our glass man, Kit Sanchez. But Ele Elegancia, Elegancia Lumber and Construction here. They have everything we have that I need. They have 16 penny nails. Uh, they have white soft uh, pine. And I want to introduce you uh, to the proprietor here. Very kind man. Help me out and we're going to go ahead and buy some lumber today. And we're going to buy some uh, some nails. Anyway, I want to I want to introduce you to Jiminy. Is no. <laughs> Jimmy, is this is this your business or okay, so, is this your business or uh, is it your family owned business or are you just like the the main man here? It's, How does uh, it's it a family owned business. Family owned business. Yeah. It, your last name isn't Elegancia, is it? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so he was telling me he has everything that we need here. He has a saw, and and he, he was telling me that a lot of people don't really understand about the white pine. Uh, and he explains right. to them sometimes that this is the normal building standard that we do inside the US, uh, it's a little, it's, it's hard for them to digest, right? Because it's so used to the yeah, other You're so of, used to tropical hardwood. Tropical hardwood yeah. here. Now, and tropical hard, hardwood actually looks really good for finishing yes. when you're doing it on the outside. But for the framing of things that you're covering up, mm -hmm. the soft pine works perfectly. Soft pine works yeah, it works perfectly. So let me show you some of the pine. Let me show you some of the products that they have uh, in this uh, warehouse they have. Now, he also told me they have a place in Lipa Lipa proper, yeah. uh, a regular hardware store. What's what's the address of that place? Do you know? Uh, it's uh, 72 Rizal Street. Uh, 72 Rizal Street. And so we'll have to stop by that place as well. Uh, but this is the big warehouse right here, and I'll show you some of the inventory that they have here. Thanks, Jimmy. You're welcome. So your, your stock on your pine, most of your pine is up in that area up yes. there? Pine up there. There's some inside. And this right outside. here, this is actually pine. Yeah, that's exactly. This is normal 2x4 pine in the mm -hmm. U.S. This is this is 2x4 stock. This is grade 2A. Grade 2A. And what's the price of this right here? Uh, fi right now it's 55 a board foot. 55 a board foot. Yeah, is this what I'm getting today? Foot. This yeah. right here? That's what I'm getting. Now this is exactly... This is Canadian pine. This is ex Canadian pine. This is exactly what I would use if I were building a construction project in the U.S. as well. And this is what we're going to use for our uh, our project that we have at Villa Feliz. What else do you have inside here? The other types of lumber that you have? Well, this is uh, tropical hardwood. That's also KD. Tropical hardwood. And when you say tropical hardwood, what's the actual tree that this is? Mm, 
they call it Philippine mahogany. But, Philipp- uh, oh, mahogany. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's sort of mahogany. The I think the Sharia. And this I is. I think the scientific name is Sharia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually great if you're building something for the outside too, because mahogany is really resistant to the insects and mm. it's resistant to moisture. Well, you, you have to finish it though. You have to do the finishing. You have on to it. do the finishing. Yeah. Yeah. So you have so a it great be, look. So it can be protected. Look at the lumber that you have here. Oh man. If you needed something with some really big beams in your roof or something like that, you got some great thicknesses of wood inside here. Usually use this for furniture. Also, for furniture building. Plus it's kind of expensive. And you you do have some thin plywood up there. Sure. What other type of plywood do you Uh, have inside? We have marine plywood and also ordinary plywood. Ordinary plywood. Uh, Marine plywood goes from 5 mm. Well, the marine plywood goes from 5 mm and up. So I might mm, 10 mm, 18 mm. Yeah, I might be working with you on some of the plywood because we're okay. using ply we're using plywood for the sheathing on the outside. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to be covering it with ba- with bamboo. So you might have you might have everything I need. One stop <laughs> shopping here. Hopefully, that's great. And I also see you have a bunch of steel uh, the steel, the, the iron works over here as well. Yes. Okay. You got the pipe. Got the angle bar. You got rebar. You got C purlin. You got some roofing material over here yep. if you're building a, uh, a little hut outside for the workers. This place has lots and lots of stuff. One of the big, uh, are, are you guys the biggest lumber yard in Lipa? I, you don't you know think so? There's other, okay, I don't know. Anyway, they have, they have a little bit of everything here. And something I want to mention about the pine that we're getting today, the pine is actually what they call KD, kiln dried. Remember we talked earlier about getting kiln dried. Uh, it's basically, it goes inside the oven, it takes all the moisture out, it makes it stable, nice and straight, no problem with warping. Now this is going to be a piece of cake building the, uh, the structure that I need, which is going to be framing. It's going to be framing uh, for, uh, I'm going to give it away, it's like a bar, uh, a tiki bar kind of a configuration. Uh, so it, it should be really easy with really good quality wood and that's what we have right here oh, I'm really happy a big score today anyway I want to I want to thank uh, Jimmy and his crew here for hooking me up with some good lumber today and we'll be back because we still have to come back we still have to get the plywood the plywood sheeting uh, uh, sheathing for the uh, for the framework and um, whatever else that we need to continue on with the project. Anyway, Jimmy, All I right. want to thank you so thank very you much. Too. You've been so helpful today. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So all right, while I go ahead and bring all that cocoa lumber that I left out in the street and bring that inside, we're going to store that. I found out that it was probably good that I picked up the cocoa lumber, even though we're not going to use it for the framing, because the cocoa lumber is going to be used for part of the little roofing material. We're going to have like a far uh, thatched roof that's going to go over the tiki bar uh, configuration. And the cocoa lumber would be a great presentation. And what I can do with this is I can run it through a, a table saw or I have a circular saw and I can cut it down to smaller dimensions that are usable to build a little roofing here, maybe like in two by two configuration. But the main thing for the framing, that uh, white pine that I'm gonna be using is gonna be very easy. So with a plan, some nails and a saw, it will be no time before we can actually construct the actual framing work and then we'll put a layer of plywood over the top of it and then what we'll do is we need some legs um, and it's the, the very beginning of the build and then what we'll do is uh, we'll try to get some bamboo what I'll probably do with the bamboo uh, some place like the shop that actually built our Bahe Kubo I might go there and ask them, can you guys just cut me some pieces or maybe even just make the entire cover uh, with the wire inside the back and we can just staple it real easily to the plywood. I don't know. Now there's another method that you use instead of using bamboo for the front, uh, the facade basically of the, uh, the bar itself, you can use the thatched uh, palm leaves that are interwoven. Uh, I've seen that as well. So we'll make a decision. That will be the final, that's the easy part. And that's actually the exciting part because that's when you really see this whole project coming together. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and get all this inside the garage. And it's early enough, I might have some time to actually start doing some construction. All right, now that I have the last piece of wood loaded inside 
the area that I'm going to be working on, I'll do a little bit more of an explanation of what we're planning to do here. This area, you see it's kind of a mess right now with the table. i got to get rid of all this stuff. This is some of my irrigation equipment, uh, some spare stuff that I'll probably just stick back inside the storage room uh, with the generator. But the layout that you see right here, this L-shaped layout, is going to be very similar uh, to the, uh, the Tiki Bar layout that we're going to do here inside this space inside the basement. Uh, so my plans are to take that wood, the, the white pine wood, the 2x4s, and build a frame. And it's going to be something like this. It's going to be like an L shape, actually a U shape here, and then another U shape over there. And it's going to be almost very similar except a little bit longer on each end uh, for access to behind the Tiki Bar area. So it will be like this. So now I will be like behind the bar. I'll have something here. Now there will be a lower level and there will be an upper level. The lower level uh, that's going to be down here is going to be to store things, uh, glasses and cleaning materials and whatever that we need back here. Then there will be a higher section of the tiki bar that comes out here all the way across and that's where people that are sitting on the outside will have the high stools uh, set there just like you would have in a regular bar uh, build, a regular bar table. Then there will be over the top up here, there will be supported by a bamboo pole here, a bamboo pole here, and a bamboo pole here. There will be a fa, a roof inside it, only about, mm, about this big, on a little bit of an angle, to look like a roof pitch just for aesthetics purpose. Then on the outside of the frame, there will be some wood sheathing. Then there will be some type of a decorative type of a uh, um, finish on the outside, whether it be bamboo, whether it be palm leaves. Um, who knows, we'll figure that out when we get to that point. Now the corners, each one of the corners, and we'll do some carve out of some wood to make it look like a, mm, sort of like a uh, tiki face, if that's, if that's actually a word, tiki face. Uh, you know, like a, a face of the tiki gods on there. And I might even take it upon myself with a chisel and a hammer to try chiseling out something that I've never done that before. I've never done carving. I've done regular construction when I cut in the cabinetry though before. Well, anyway, uh, let me go ahead and uh, start moving some of the stuff around and see if I can't get this project started. Okay, so one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm going to look at the length of a stock piece of granite that I have. I know this is a common size. Uh, this is 240 centimeters, about 94 and a half inches. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract about six and a half inches because I want six and a half inches overlap. So if you look at six and a half, six and a half is about to here. I want six inches of overlap and I'm going to use about probably about half inch plywood. Uh, for the sheathing that's going to go on the inside of the framework. So I want about six inch overlap. That gives you a little bit of room for you to put your legs underneath uh, the countertop. I think I'm going to go with granite. I was going to do it with wood, but I just think granite is such a nice finish. So easy to clean up and it'll last forever. And then we'll put some track lighting up underneath the bottom. Uh, so I'll subtract those two and then I'll cut my two by four stock uh, for the beginning of the framing of wall one. Now the two next pieces I'm going to cut here, they're going to be 60 centimeters long. Uh, and why 60 centimeters? Because the granite is 60 centimeters wide and it's 240 centimeters long. Uh, so what this piece will allow me to do, and it will butt up against the piece that we just cut that's on the floor, it will allow us to slide a piece of 60 centimeter granite which will butt up against the uh, the outer wall, uh, and you'll see how we'll do this with the plywood. The plywood will have some grooves inside to allow you to do that, and then it will come flush. The granite will come flush to this end right here. Now this is not the top section. This is the lower section. Uh, the top section will be done a little bit differently.
Okay, so what I have now, uh, I have the actual studs that will go inside the frame, the front frame. And they'll go like this, each one, there'll be five of these inside the frame. It's like this all the way down. Equal spacing all the way down. And then there will be a top piece, just like this one that's on the bottom, that will go for the top. I used, uh, thir these are 38 inches, 38 inches plus uh, the inch, uh, let's see, I think this is like an inch and a quarter on the bottom, will be an inch and a quarter on the top. And that will give me approximately the height that I'm looking for, uh, for our high stools that will go on the outside. Uh, so, the way I d decided how deep, the small piece that is down there, uh, I allowed for the inside section for a 60 centimeter granite top. And then on the top, we are going to do, it's going to be like a L. It's going to come over, up, and then over. To allow for the cutout of a 60 centimeter piece of granite for a small piece on the end, a narrow part for where you place your cups and your plates, all the way around to this end down here as well. Uh, so uh, the, the granite on the top won't go as far back as when it's here because of the restriction of the 60 centimeters of the width of the granite itself. Well, that's about it for today. I'm, I'm tired, <laughs> but we got uh, not a lot accomplished here, but the mere fact that we were able to source out some material that I didn't think would be available in the Philippines, uh, some normal construction wood like I, I'm used to using, that was a big bonus for me today. So you can see what is accomplished here. It's part of the frame. Remember I said it's going to be like a U-shape? And this is the, the right side of the U right here. So uh, remember granite is 60, 60 centimeters deep. Uh, 60 centimeters, so let's get out to 60 centimeters on here. And basically what it's gonna look like, we're gonna have about six inches overlap on the outside, like this. And then maybe like inch and a half to two inches of overlap on the back side here. Now, I didn't put a piece of wood, there's supposed to be three pieces of wood here, one, two, and one will connect to the bottom down here. But since we are going to do a piece of granite on the inside here, and it's not, it doesn't go through the wall, you know, like the extension out there, I, I, I have to have a smaller piece of wood right here that comes up and comes over about like this area right here. Uh, and this area will be mainly uh, for the person who is behind the bar area, the cheeky bar, and uh, to be able to like wash, wash uh, glasses, have silverware, have all your supplies kind of like back up here that's hidden from the people on the other side so they don't see all the mess behind uh, the bar area. So that's what it is. Now what I have remaining to do is I have to do this side over here. I also have to build this side. Uh, and then once, once I get the framing in, again, it'll be the sheathing, the plywood sheathing. Now the plywood sheathing that will be going on the outside of the frame, it doesn't have to be real thick. Remember, it'll be used for making sure everything is nice and square. It won't, it won't shift back and forth. But it's mainly support for us to be able to put either bamboo or the different type of uh, whatever we decide for the outside. M maybe some of uh, the palm leaves on the outside. So that's what that's gonna be for. So I, we'll have to go back. Uh, probably won't be tomorrow. It will probably be maybe on Monday. Well, that's about it for today. Uh, that's enough for today's episode. This is going to be a continuing uh, um, build right here. So you'll see this, the progression of this, over probably a while. Because uh, I probably won't be do, working on it every single day because there are other things that need to be done around here. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share. And if you have not subscribed, just click on that little MyPA Dream heart. Bottom right hand side of your screen, you'll be subscribed and you'll be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.
you enjoyed today's episode and you would like to see more just like these, just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects, how to, or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building, you'll find answers there as well.